This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. A science story, huh? These NYU scientists, they it felt, felt I right. Really right. I was so and I just thought, well, I figured it out. It was that golden moment. Because science was on my side. Hey everyone, I'm Ben Lilly, and welcome to the Story Collider, where we bring you true stories of how science has affected people's lives. This week's story is from Kishore Hari. The story was recorded in September 2013 at the Middle East Downstairs in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The theme of the evening was Poisons and Passions. Oh, I am so goddamn excited to be here and... It's because I used to be a, a scientist. I owned my own scientific company for a while, but I found it soulless and um, soul crushing is the word I used to my wife when I was trying to justify quitting a job and going into science education, which is not the best move when you're having a kid and you're like, eh, can can I quit my health insurance? <laughs> um, but thinking about my best memories in science, it it involves just shooting the shit with my friends over beers where we talk about science and somehow that translated in my mind like you should go into science education that's what science education is we get 300 people in a bar and we get drink, we drink beer and we talk about science and look at this this is what is happening right now that is a real thing my dad would be so disappointed um <laughs> And uh, after kind of trudging through for a couple of years in science education, this amazing opportunity showed up. I, somebody was like, hey, I have some money. I want you to run a science festival. I had no idea what the fuck that was. And um, uh, go get tens of thousands of people excited about science. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Um, and, but... But there was this notion in my head, like, I knew everything that was not right about science education. I didn't want to do stuff in schools because the kids get all the attention, and I wasn't a kid anymore. I wanted to have stuff in bars and cafes, and I wanted to go places that adults could congregate and talk about science without worrying about strollers. Now I feel very differently now that I have a three-year-old. But (laughs) but at the time... um, I was, I was very centered that there were these 15 steps I was going to take to run a science festival, and, and I was going to get away from campuses, and we were going to go out in the community. We are going to go places that science hasn't gone before, and I was a neophyte, but there was something so enthralling about this. And then a friend pulled me aside and was like, have you ever been to a science festival? Um, not so much. And he was like, why don't you actually go to one? And you know when somebody gives you a suggestion that makes too much sense and you're just mad at them because they gave it to you? And so fast forward a few months, and it's April 2011, and I'm going to go to three science festivals in five days. And I hop a plane to North Carolina who's having a statewide endeavor. There is one woo for North Carolina. Boston... (laughs) Tough crowd. Um, And I hop off the plane, and I'm going to go to the fucking weirdest thing that is on their schedule. And I see a tour of a nuclear power plant. And if you're brown like me, post (laughs) 9-11... Even my dad laughs at that one. Um, So I end up at this nuclear power plant an hour and a half outside of Charlotte and... 40 inner-city high school kids from Charlotte show up, and they were so happy to be not in class and um, super interested in the security guards carrying AR-15s, but 
did not give a shit about nuclear power. And they subjected us to this ungodly bad lecture on nuclear power. Did you guys know that nuclear power is the energy of the future? And after this sort of terrible lecture and these kids couldn't give a shit about it, we, they trot us out to this, this sort of rundown exhibit. Um, and I see this sort of 15-year-old kid in the corner. And he had been paying attention and had uh, picked up this Geiger counter to show how, you know, everyday objects have radiation. And he had listened to how smoke detectors have a radioactive isotope in it. And he tries to break this exhibit and take the Geiger counter and point it at the smoke detector in the, at the ceiling. And I was like, I'm going to help that kid do that. <laughs> like, I'm an adult. I'm going to go help him break that museum exhibit. And so I do. And then the teacher comes over. She's not super happy about the brown guy sitting in the back row of the lecture on nuclear power plants, like, who furiously was taking notes, talking to her student. But I kind of, like, nicely explained to her what we're trying to do, and she's like, oh. And then calls over the entire class to break this museum exhibit. It was awesome. <laughs> and so we break this museum exhibit and take a your counter and assemble, like, a super not safe ladder to the ceiling. And... <laughs> And point the Geiger counter to it, and hurrah, it does have a radioactive isotope in it, and clicks twice, which is the most unfulfilling like s- conclusion to that, that piece. But I was like, oh, I'm at a scientific facility. And I had this amazing experience in North Carolina, and a couple days later I have to leave, and I end up in Philadelphia, some ungodly early flight to Philadelphia, and the festival director's like, meet me at a school. Fuck I have to go to some goddamn assembly. And, like, I've been running away from assembly since I was 13, and I show up, and sure enough, it's full of 400 kids that didn't want to be in a school assembly, and um, they're all going to jump at the same time to see if they could create a seismic shift. And there are these two scientists there about to record the data, and I kind of turned to them, and I was like, is this actually going to work? Because this doesn't actually work. And... um, they just kind of laughed and were like, yeah, this isn't about data. Just you wait. And I was like, that's fucking weird for a scientist to say. And um, <laughs> all of a sudden, it kicks into motion. And the principal says a few words, and then the school of rock comes out. Like, straight out of the movie, these kids start playing Zeppelin and Sabbath. And I'm really aware of how a 13- and 14-year-old band cannot know what Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath are. <laughs> And they are crushing it. And but there's like one kid in the back row that's not a kid because he's 250 pounds and has a giant goatee. And I'm like, who is that? It's like, and somebody turns to me and is like, oh, that's a starting fullback for the Eagles. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? Why is this happening? <laughs> this is not how I remember school assemblies. And just then, the mayor of Philadelphia walks in. Why is the mayor here? <laughs> And he jumps on stage, and I'm going to need your help a little bit here. And he jumps on stage and says, like, a couple talking points about science and starts doing this. Come on. Come on, people in the back. We will, we will rock the earth. Rock the earth. We will, we will rock the earth. Rock the earth. Why is a mayor (laughs) quoting a queen song to teach people about geology? Why is this happening? And he gets, and these kids lose their collective minds. (laughs) And they don't know anything about Freddie Mercury as much as I want them to. And it was amazing. They just, all of these people jump and, the, and one of the scientists there tries to record the data furiously, and the other one just starts fucking laughing at her as she's trying to keep up with this. And it was this, I was like, holy shit, I've never had a school assembly like this in my life. And I ride that adrenaline wave. And um, then I end up in Las Vegas for their science festival. I know what you're thinking, like... What a weird place for a science festival is Las Vegas. And I have this amazing day coming off a red eye, and I go to all these different places, and I end up in downtown Las Vegas. You should groan. 
downtown Las Vegas is the Las Vegas that Las Vegas doesn't want to remember. <laughs> and I meant Fremont Street, the place where they decided nature was a little bit too intrusive in Las Vegas. So we're going to build a giant LED screen over the road to block out any source of nature. And so there's this two-block LED screen that covers it from casino to casino. And I'm sitting there waiting for a tour of the control room that controls this. And, like, there's engineers. And I am still hiding, I'm flying high like a kite. Yes, drugs is a key component of this story. Um, and I sit down, and there's this Ethiopian family ac- across from me. Uh, a mom, her young baby, and, and two sort of middle school-aged kids. And I start just going nuts about how I was underneath the Bellagio fountains talking to the engineer and talking to the zoologist that maintains the white tiger and and how that was just an incredible set of experiences I've had over the past few days. And do you know when you've said the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time? And it was just obvious. The air went out of the room. And I started talking to this woman and, and actually, more importantly, listening to this woman in a lobby room of some nondescript building in the center of Las Vegas. And she had been in the country two weeks, fled. She was essentially a res- refugee in this country, here illegally, fled an abusive life in Ethiopia. And me mentioning the Bellagio and the Mirage Hotel, those were as foreign to her as her being in this country. And I started to actually listen. I'm like, how did you end up here? You're on a science tour. Like, you're the farthest person I could ever imagine to be here, sitting here next to me. And she had been to Walmart, and the seven-year-old got a handout at a Walmart about science tours in downtown Las Vegas. And he had demanded to go on this tour. And I I now have a three-year-old, and I understand how difficult that is to put up with. So I understand why she was there, and there was this moment where um, it was clear that I was going to shut the fuck up and listen to this woman and, and talk to her about her experience. And we get ushered into this control room, and uh, this engineer starts talking about all these switches and just kind of imagine this giant room of switches, and you're seven what do you do in a room full of switches when you're seven? And um, he, he does a great job for two and a half minutes. <laughs> and so this engineer is giving us a talk about, you know, this relay goes to X place. Blah, 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 blah. That's how far I remember it. And this kid starts hitting switches after two and a half minutes. And lights start going off on the street. And the engineer comes over and quickly resets it. And I was like, okay, I'm getting kicked out. That's not what happened. He just stops and says, and pulls the kid over. I was like, oh no, he's gonna hit this kid. (laughs) But instead he was like, no, you wanna flick this switch. (laughs) What? And so he tells him the awesome switches to switch. And they start turning out whole casino lights on the strip. (laughs) Why is this happening? And the kid is like, whee! It just starts turning off switches. And what's great is there's all these cameras set up. So we get to see the reaction of people on the street when lights go out next to them. They're like, oh my lord. It It was fantastic. And he just plays with this kid for 20 minutes showing him how to control all of downtown Las Vegas in its crappy glory. And I'm left with this notion of, I'm sure that is the first time that kid has ever met a scientist, engineer, whatever. (laughs) But the notion of, that stuck with me, as I hop in a cab to go home to San Francisco of, I don't know shit about running a science festival. 
And that was pretty goddamn exciting. Thank you. That was Kishore Hari. Kishore is the director of the Bay Area Science Festival, an annual celebration of science in San Francisco. After spending years operating an environmental services company, he left industry for the greener pastures of public science events and science education. He has founded numerous public science ventures, including a science cafe, a science field trip series, and a comprehensive calendar of science events across the Bay Area. The event was presented as part of the Conference on the Evolving Culture of Science Engagement and was generously sponsored by the Intel Corporation. For more science stories, take a look at storycollider.org, where we have archives of the podcast and upcoming events. The Story Collider is produced by me, Brian Wecht, Aaron Barker, and Ari Daniel. The podcast is produced by Rose Evelith. Additional help from Brooke Williams, Lena Groger, and Justin D'Ambrosio. The theme music is by Ghost. Special thanks to the Middle East for hosting the show, to Ben Weehy for tremendous help, and to science festivals. There's no joke here. Those things are awesome. Go find one near you. Thanks for listening. Every day, we rise, challenging ourselves to work for what we believe in. At U.S. Border Patrol, protecting our borders is more than a job. It's a calling. Agents answer the call, working together to keep our country and communities safe. If you are ready for a new mission, join U.S. Border Patrol and go beyond. Learn more at cbp.gov slash careers.